before we start evaluating functions using the algebraic approach, let's first try to get an intuitive grasp of the concept. So what does the limit of a function really mean? Let's try to explore this concept using an example. Consider the function f given by x squared minus 4 over x minus 2. We know that this is a rational function, so the denominator should not be 0. It follows that x minus 2 should not be 0 since that is our denominator. Hence, x should not be equal to 2. Now, this is where it gets interesting. We know that x should not be equal to 2, but we can choose values that are very close to 2. So that's what we'll explore in the next slide. But before we do that, let us first try to simplify the fraction if possible. Now we know that the numerator is a difference of two squares, x squared minus four, and this can be factored into x minus two times x plus two. Therefore, we can rewrite the function into factored form. And we will see that we have a common factor, which is x minus 2. This reduces the fraction into x plus 2, where x should not be equal to 2. Now, x plus 2 is a linear function, and we know that linear functions have lines as graphs. Also, we know that it is easy to graph a line. We just need two points any two points. So without loss of generality, let me pick x equals 1. When x is 1, the value of my function would be, I'll just substitute 1 to x, so I would have 1 plus 2 equals 3. Therefore, I have a point 1, 3 on the graph of f of x. Now let us locate point 13 on the Cartesian plane. Now this is point 13 on the Cartesian plane. Now we need another point. And we know that the function f has a corresponding linear form, which is x plus 2. Though x should not be equal to 2, since this is a linear function, we can still substitute 2 to x. So let's try to do that. When we do that, we get a value for x plus 2, which is equal to 4. So ideally, we'll have a point 2, 4 on the graph. But since x should not be equal to 2, then we have an open point. Again, why is this so? Because x should not be equal to 2. So let's plot that. This is open. That's why I shaded it white. When we connect this point, we get a line. But again, 2, 4, point 2, 4 is not part of the graph. Now, now, let's try to look at the behavior of the points on the graph as the values of x move closer to 2 from values that are less than 2. So when x is 1, we get function value equal to 3. When x is 1.5, we get 3.5. Observe the direction of the points. When, we, when x is 1.9, we get 3.9. So what happens? As our x's move closer and closer to 2, the points on the graph are also getting closer and closer to 0.24. So therefore, the values of our f of x move towards 4. Again, let's try to emphasize this. On the left-hand side, or when we take values of x that are less than 2, or that are at the left side of 2, we say that as x approaches to from the left, in symbols we write it this way, the arrow means approaches, 2 from the left is represented by 2 raised to the negative sign. We have seen that 
the point on the graph gets closer and closer to 0.24. This means that the function values or f of x approach 4. In limit notation, we get the limit of f of x as x approaches to from the left is equal to 4. This is a one-sided limit which we call the left-hand limit since we are taking values of x from the left of 2. Now let's take the right-hand side or let's take values that are greater than 2. So let's start with x equals 3. This gives us y equals 5. When x is 2.5, we have y equals 4.5. So when we move our x's towards 2 from the right of 2, what have you observed? The points on the graph are also getting closer to 0.24. So it follows that the values of our y are also moving towards 4. So let's re do a recap. At the values of x approach a equals 2 from values that are at the right of 2 or values that are greater than 2. We, or we say that as x approaches 2 from the right. In symbols, we write it this way. Notice that we have 2 raised to the positive exponent. What happened to the points of the graph when this happens? The points of the graph are getting closer and closer to point 0.24. So the values of the function approach 4. In limit notation, we get this form. We read it as the limit of f of x as x approaches to from the right is equal to 4. This is another one-sided limit which we call the right-hand limit because we took values of x that are greater than 2. Now, f of 2 does not exist, meaning the function value at 2 does not exist. But the left hand and the right hand limit exist and they are both equal to 4. So therefore, we say that the limit of the function as x approaches 2 is equal to 4. So when we evaluate limits intuitively, we have two options. We can use a table of values. We can also use the graph. We use both. You can actually just use one method. We use both methods and we have shown that the limit of f of x as x approaches 2 is equal to 4. 